Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. Welcome in, welcome in, Winning Cures Everything. I'm Gary. I'm Chris. And we've got a lot to hit on this evening. This is the long-form version of the show. If you watch The Daily Show, welcome to the long one. If you don't watch The Daily One, it's on Periscope and Facebook every day, so go check it out. We don't do that one on YouTube. That is a, that is solely a 15-minute quick hit on random topics. So, uh, the website, winningcureseverything.com, you can find the podcast, you can find pics, previews, videos, uh, everything else over there. Our social media platforms, we're on Facebook, we're on Twitter, we are on YouTube, and if you're listening on the podcast, make sure that you hit subscribe there. The show is brought to you every week by... Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They've got six incredible sports books. You can find more information on those, along with all the great shows that are coming through town. They've got comedy shows. They've got concerts coming through. They've got great steakhouses. They've got great golf courses. It's starting to warm up. You're going to want to go out to Tunica National. Uh, go get more information at tunicatravel.com. Chris and I will be at Sam's Town Casino in Tunica, March 19th, March 20th. That's a Thursday and Friday, the first two days of the NCAA tournament. And we are going to have a blast. We're doing four live broadcasts, one each morning, one each afternoon, 9.30 a.m. Central Time, 4 p.m. Central Time. We will be doing it on YouTube, Periscope, and Facebook. And the podcast will be up immediately following. Uh, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. So if you are anywhere in the vicinity or you just feel like traveling in and you want to hang out all day, we're going to be there all day, all night. Having a blast. It's going to be a good time. Uh, Chris, we had a blast last year doing it, right? Yes, it was a good time. It was definitely a good time. We're excited and, to go back. Oh, yeah. And uh, and we'll be staying on Friday night this go-around. We didn't stay Friday night last time, but uh, but we're staying this time. And, or at least I am. You are, too, I, I would imagine, right? I do not know the answer to that. <laughs> okay. I will be there on Friday night, too. I know we will both be there on Thursday night. Um, but we do have rooms on Thursday and Friday night. And, yeah, it's going to be an absolute blast. I've already talked to several people coming in from out of town. Uh, they are coming in. They've got their rooms already booked. It's going to be fantastic. March 19th, March 20th at Sam's Town Casino in Tunica. Come and hang out with us. Tell your buddies about it. Uh, share the show out if you have not. And let's go ahead and jump into this thing. We've got several topics that we're going to discuss. Since this is the longer show, we're just going to kind of free flow into different ideas. So the first topic which I think is the biggest topic, uh, the coronavirus stuff. The, the impact that it has on sports. Now, we can talk all day about shutting down businesses and shutting down schools and sh you know all this different kind of stuff. What we are most interested in, at least on this show, or for purposes of the show, is the idea that they might be playing the NCAA tournament or maybe not playing the NCAA tournament at all, but playing the NCAA tournament without a crowd. Uh, they've already canceled the Ivy League conference tournament, which is a complete bummer because Harford got the, uh, the number two seed in that tournament. They are host or were hosting the conference tournament, and they already beat the number one seed, Yale, twice this season. They beat them both times they played them. They were going to get them at home, in a conference tournament, if they could get through the rest of the tournament, of course, uh, for a chance to go to the NCAA tournament. And instead, the Ivy League just said, okay, well, Yale's going. And it may be easier for them to do it because the Ivy League, up until 2017, had never had a conference tournament. Their regular season champ went every year anyway. But this kind of thing sucked. Like, not playing in front of people, I think, is a bigger deal than a lot of people would like to to make mention of, right? Like, it, it so makes it a whole different playing game. playing in front of people is a better option than not playing at all. Agreed, agreed. Uh, but it will change the it will change the feel of the game. Yes. it's it, when, when an underdog gets momentum in these NCAA tournament games and they get the crowd behind them and it feels like everything is going your way, they, sometimes they feed off of that buzz. If there's no buzz in the arena... I, I think you will see a lot more favorites winning than normal. 
Uh, so that part sucks. But the forget all of that. Let's just discuss whether or not they shouldn't allow people or whether or not they should even play the games. Dan Wolken from USA Today put out an article today stating that it is irresponsible of the NCAA to even have the tournament right now. It's and, irresponsible for somebody like Dan Wolken, who knows nothing about any of this stuff, okay, to have an opinion like that and try to press and lobby for something of that nature. Yeah, I, I agree. Now, I don't think that there's any chance of it happening. Uh, I think there's more of a chance of... I mean, of, that guy's just looking for clickbait crap. That's all he is. He hit all the hot-button topics to make somebody want to click his article. Yeah. And then he's got nothing but fluff inside there. No substance whatsoever. That's that's kind of what it seemed like. Uh, he he had a valid point, if only because he mentioned, okay, what happens if because you're bringing like nine hundred uh, student athletes together and hundreds of coaches together in this one tournament in eight different sites, nine if you count Dayton, and you are asking them all to interact with each other. And if one of them comes up with, you know, they test positive for it after they've already played, all the people that are around them, somebody's going to be in the Sweet 16, and they may have to be quarantined. They may they may have players out because they may be quarantined because of this virus. Health, health is a major part of any run for any championship, and that's just part of it. I mean, you know, yeah. the Jordan flu game was a playoff game. That was a big deal. Like, you know, it, it's just a part of everything. You can't run away from it. This is a sickness, but it's not the plague. We, we now have said when it first came out, everybody had a right to be afraid because we didn't know what the hell we were dealing with. And now that we, and we were leaning on foreign reports to give us accurate information, which we don't trust there at reporting very well at all. And now that we have cases of our own here, in enough cases of our own in our country, we're able to see this is a virus. And it's not anything to laugh at, but it's also nothing to be afraid of. Like, the only people who get seriously, dangerously ill are people who already have compromised immune systems to begin with. Well, I don't think there are many St. Jude kids going to these things. True. You know? And I'm not trying to make a joke there, but at the end of the day, these are healthy college age to middle aged adults and playing are healthy college age and middle aged adults. Now, if somebody gets sick and they have to get quarantined and it's the best player on Kansas and he can't play in the finals, that's just part of it. How is it any different than if he rolls his ankle? Well, let's just not play the game at all then. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's, we uh... think that this chance of him missing a game or a coach getting sick and missing the game and okay. Like, you don't stop do, living your life because of something of this nature. It's not as dangerous or as bad as we all thought it was going to be. And it took people in America getting it before we realized, oh, okay. It's like a bad cold. All yeah. right. People have played with colds before. Now, and you're then right. in about 14 days, it's going to run its course to your system. And like any other, it's going to go away. Yeah. You're going to be fine. I mean, you, you mentioned the Jordan flu game. Like, I, I don't remember anybody having the flu at, from either of those teams after that game. Nope. We don't so, know that anybody got the flu from him. Yeah. And, and yet he was playing with everybody. Yes. So, uh, we, we mentioned the Ivy League canceled its conference tournament. Uh, we mentioned Ohio uh, talking. Uh, no, we haven't mentioned that. The governor of Ohio, Mike DeWine, put out a statement asking for no events with spectators other than the athletes, parents, and others essential to the game. And that's significant because the first four is in Dayton, and then Cleveland but is all but, but he's asked for that. Yeah, he hasn't demanded anything for yeah, that. Yeah, he hasn't he's going to get that. The yeah. NBA sure as hell ain't going to give him that. Yeah. Major League Baseball, when it starts up in a couple of weeks, ain't going to give him that. No, you're right. You're right. The Mid-American Conference and the Big West Conference tournaments – uh, closed down their tournaments to spectators already. Um, the NCAA, they did release a statement. They said the NCAA continues to assess how COVID-19 impacts the conduct of our tournaments and events. We are consulting with public health officials and our COVID-19 advisory panel who are leading experts in epidemiology and public health and will make decisions in the coming days. 
it, it's a little strange that we're going to go through conference tournaments where they're playing in front of thousands of people and possibly could get to next week and they determine, okay, we're not going to have any spectators, but we are going to play the games. Like, I'll tell you that it, it might feel weird in the gym. I don't think it's going to give the favorites that big of an edge, to be honest with you. And let me tell you why. As soon as those guys start getting down, because nobody will be in the arena. Listen, I've been to Grizzlies games before where I'm not exaggerating. There are less than 200 people there. Yeah. All right? This was back <laughs> in the day when they sucked, and it was a Tuesday night, and it was a Grizzlies-Warriors game. It was way before Steph Curry when yeah. the Warriors were one of the worst teams in the league. And, and I'm not exaggerating when somebody on the other end of the arena's cell phone rang, they you can answered it. it. And while they were dribbling the basketball and playing, everybody heard their conversation. <laughs> With that being said, I'm going to tell you, these players are used to, especially if they're the favorite, getting star calls. And if they don't, and normally in a big crowded arena when everyone's yelling and screaming, they can say whatever the hell they want and keep on running and nobody do anything from them for them. But now the ref could be on the complete opposite end of the court. And when you cuss that guy or you say something which you think nobody will normally hear because you're used to saying it over and over again, and now it's as quiet as a church, brother, you're going to have problems. People are going to get teed up. People are going to get thrown out. People are going to get foul shots that they shouldn't have got. They're going to get extra fouls that they shouldn't have. And it's going to affect the outcome of the game. And I don't think it's just going to hurt the underdogs. I think you you might be right. You might be right. I just think at some point in time, all this stuff plays out. Listen, I watched a baseball game a couple of years ago where Baltimore Orioles played in the empty stadium because of some weird situation that happened. I, I, you know, I've, I've seen this before. It's not the end of the world. We've I've watched a lot of soccer recently. I've got a friend; he's really interested, and <laughs> and, uh, and 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 we kind of talk a lot about it. And they're playing all these and like it's not. I mean, it's a little. It took. It takes some getting used to. But 20, 30 minutes into the game, into the match, it's fine. Like it becomes normal. Yeah. When this thing tips off, it's going to be weird. By halftime, it's going to be normal. Yeah. By the second game, it's going to be normal. And it's going to be the same for every team if they go that route. Canceling and not playing at all is unexcusable. Absolutely unexcusable. I don't think there's any chance whatsoever because, I mean, if this thing was killing people and and it was something that was that severe, I'd have a different stance. Now, listen, I'm a guy who puts down hardwood floors for a living and talks about sports and gambling. All right. I'm obviously not. You know, a doctor, but I listen to doctors and most of the real medical professionals who aren't members of the media and they're actually just medical professionals are telling people, please stop overreacting. Please stop going into freak out mode. You're making this thing worse than it is. Yeah. And Dan Wolken is a part of the world that just wants to make things worse than it already is. Yeah. It's how he makes a living. Well, I mean, to be fair, he and, and a lot of others in the media, and we are included in that. We don't like the NCAA, but to to come out and say that the NCAA tournament needs to be canceled is, I mean, that's a little far-fetched. That's a little far-reaching, really. It, the problem is your logic is bad. Your science is bad. Yeah. You think that somebody might get hurt sick, and therefore they're going to be quarantined and have to miss the game, and therefore it's an advantage to the other team. But – Every player and coach out there has that same risk. So it's not like, you know, you can just, you know, hazard warfare and and go in and Asian Orange target the best player on a team and then hope that two weeks later they get taken out. Well, I mean, the truth is, like, if, if teams feel like they should not be a part of this, they can turn down invitations to the tournament. Yeah, nobody's going to do that, by the way. Yeah, nobody's going to do that because they all want to play. Yes. So it, not giving them the option to play is ridiculous. I mean, it's just... It, I, I do believe that there's a time in life where you need to protect people from themselves. This is not one of them. Yeah, I agree. It's just not... Look, in two weeks, I might be proven wrong. The death toll might be astronomical, and I might look to be a moron. I don't think that's going to happen, and I'm just not the kind of person that's afraid of things. Look, I got to live my life. I just... I wouldn't handle being quarantined very well. And, and, I mean, I guess if I was a true danger to everybody around me, then it's one thing. 
But the reason people are having a hard time staying quarantined is because they feel fine. Yeah. Because whatever their symptoms are, aren't that bad. Yeah. They feel like they can still function. And the, the number one overall right reason for happiness in this world is purpose. And when you take somebody's purpose away and you lock them in a room for two weeks, man, it causes depression, anxiety. I mean, it's not good. It's not healthy for them. Yeah. People want to get out and they want to do something meaningful and purposeful. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, so I guess uh, final verdict from us on what, what we would do in this situation. Uh, nothing. Life continues. Life goes on. Uh, there's been, what, 19 total deaths in the United States from this. Um, I don't think we're quite to that point yet. I think everybody freaks out over the stuff that went on uh, overseas in other countries. But it has not happened here. Now, obviously, gonna, you do want to uh, you want to keep it from spreading. You want to keep it from happening here. That's right. I'm not, I'm not but promoting I, that we all go out and try to get the damn thing. Yeah, but I, I don't think that, you know, going to an arena to watch a basketball game will be your ultimate demise. You know, I just don't, I don't buy that. I I live, this is, this is going to sound ridiculous. This is the nerd in me. I guess it's fitting that I'm wearing Star Wars shirt tonight. (laughs) Um, Wise man once said this until such as time as the world ends, we will act as though it intends to spin on. That was Nick Fury. Yeah. There you go. (laughs) I love it. Educate yourself. Samuel L. Jackson, throw a little MS in there. There you go. There you go. All right, let's move on. Let's uh, let's change topics. The NFL franchise tag deadline has been pushed back. Um, let me let me read the article here. This is from uh, let's see, Trib Live, T R I B Live. dot com. Delayed once because of uncertainty over the proposed collective bargaining agreement, the deadline for NFL teams to use the franchise and transition tags has been pushed back again. Teams now have until eleven fifty nine a.m. Monday to decide whether to use the tags on players. The Steelers are expected to use the franchise tag on outside linebacker Bud Dupree, uh, and they'll have a few more days to make that decision. The original deadline of Tuesday at 4 p.m. was pushed back by two days when the NFL and its Players Association were finalizing a new collective bargaining agreement. The NFLPA, however, extended its deadline for players to vote on the CBA until the weekend now, and the NFL decided to follow suit with its deadline for the franchise and transition tags. Players have until midnight Saturday to approve the new CBA. If that uh, in the CBA that expires after this season, teams can use both the franchise and transition tags. If the new CBA is ratified, teams will have to choose one tag or the other, not both, in 2020. So that is uh, that's pretty interesting, I think. Yeah. Um, the new tag deadline will push up against the legally tampering period for free agency, which begins Monday at noon. The new league calendar year and the official start of free agency still scheduled to begin March 18th at 4 p.m. Um, so let's let's kind of break this down a little bit. Obviously, you want to give teams at least a little bit of time for when the CBA is voted on. Um, nobody has explained what happens if the players do not vote for the new CBA. So if they don't, then you you well, would I think I think the the current agreement still has like two or three years on it. So uh, it's well, it it's got no the current agree, the current CBA expires after this season, like this coming season. Is it after this? I, for some yeah. I thought it had two years on it. Maybe no, no, no. It's, three. It's, it's still it's after this season. Because I was under the impression that one of the reasons that the owners were pushing for this thing to happen sooner is just so they could have labor peace in time to do all these new TV deals because a lot of their TV contracts are coming up. And it had nothing to do with we're not close to locking out or really having to come to an agreement. It was just, you can maximize your dollars if you know you have labor peace. Here we go. No, no, it says it in the article. In the CBA that expires after this season, teams can use both the franchise and transition tags. Okay, if the so new, I guess it does. I, that's surprising to me. I thought that I had read somewhere specifically that it still had several years left in it. Not several, but a it, couple. It says, if the new CBA is ratified, teams will have to choose one tag or the other, not both. Yeah. So, um, if it well, is not why ratified, they would wait. if they were, they would wait. But if it's not ratified, then you play with the rules that you got. Yeah, and you just you you use both tags. Yeah, and so um, 
as far as the new CBA goes, I, I think that you know a little bit more about this than I do. Uh, w- would it be in the players' best interest to go ahead and bring in this new CBA? In the players' best interest, see, that's an interest. It's hard to define that because the players are made up of a substantial amount of guys. Okay, if you are one of the eighty percent of players that makes two million dollars or less then yes, you want the new CBA agreement. It is more money. You will you will get a substantial pay raise. Those guys will. Yeah. And and you will have to work more, but you'll have more opportunity as well. Um, if you are a highly compensated top 10, 15% player in the league, then you don't want this deal because it's more work for less money per game, so to speak. But that's only for the top percentage of elites and in the CBA at some point in time, when what's rarely is a deal good for everybody. And when you have a group of people that are some here and some down here, there's an old saying that, you know, democracy ain't so good when it bites you in the ass. Yeah. And, and those guys might be super, I'm going to tell you all those super rich, powerful players, they better start throwing around the money to the low guys. Because those low guys outnumber them, I don't know, five to one, six to one. Yeah, it's it's pretty insane. And you can try to convince them all you want because you're the leader in the locker room. But at the end of the day, if you're not paying their bills, they do not care what you think. Now, you're right about that. Appreciate that Rolex for Christmas. At the end of the day, that's not going to pay my bills every year. How, I need a guaranteed check. Do you know how the uh, how the voting is broken down? I don't. Well, what do you mean? How the voting is broken down? The voting is broken down. Every player that's a member of the union gets a vote. So every single player that's a, a member of the NFLPA. Well, yeah. Gets, if you're a member of the PA, you get a vote. All right. Now you you mentioned something, and I'm going to try and, and JJ look this Watt's up. vote doesn't count any more or less than a first year, you know, six round draft pick. Well, that's okay. Count so that's one apiece. You you mentioned something about uh, NFL players trying to change their vote. So I saw somewhere, so I didn't want to really bring this up because I don't have any information on it. I literally just saw a headline go across my news feed while stopped at a red light checking my phone. Um, <laughs> may, may have been driving. Uh, that, that said several players um, were interested in wondering if they could change their vote. And I, I didn't, I never read the article, never got into it. I literally am now talking about something I don't know anything about. Right. Um, Let's see, I've, I've got an article pulled up. This is from Bleacher Report. But I was curious, is it more people that have actually read the CBA and see this as pretty good deal and want to change their no to a yes, or is it the upper echelon people have finally convinced some of the lower-tier guys to change their no's, yeses to no's? Let's see. According to Bleacher Report, uh, ESPN's Dan Graziano and Cameron Wolf reported Monday night that NFL players will not be able to change their already cast votes regarding the new collective bargaining agreement. Enough players had asked whether they could change their votes that the NFL player reps in meetings uh, taking place in Key Biscayne, Florida, decided to propose the resolution, but it did not succeed, Graziano and Wolf wrote. The NFLPA announced earlier Monday that the voting period had been extended to Saturday. Uh, the previous deadline was on Thursday. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 uh, Let's see, Albert Breer, Monday morning quarterback uh, writer, reported earlier Monday that the players wanted the union to provide a comparison document between the current proposal and the 2011 CBA, and the union wanted them to have enough time to thoroughly look at everything. Reasonable, given it's a 10-year extension, Breer noted. Um, Let's see, NFL owners previously approved the terms of the new CBA on February 20th. Uh, Let's see, several star players spoke out against the proposal, um, let's see. The ongoing CBA negotiations could affect the NFL's deadlines. There are no changes to the blah, 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 blah. Okay. Oh, okay. According to Yahoo Sports' Charles Robinson, over 1,000 players have already submitted their CBA votes. Well, yeah, most of them talked to their agents as soon as it came out, got the information that they needed. and Because none of these guys read this stuff. I think, it, I mean, it's like any legal document, you know. It's probably 300 pages long and full of legal jargon that, you know, the average person wouldn't understand. So you hand it to your agent, agent gives you the 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 gist and like, hey, this on. would be good for you or it wouldn't. Yeah. Right. Okay. 
So, and I, I would think using that kind of logic, uh, this thing is going to pass this weekend. I think so too. So. I mean, I thought it was going to pass all along, but it is simply a numbers game. Aaron Rodgers and JJ Watts and Russell Wilson's just aren't the norm. Yeah. All right. Those guys have big voices and they're real loud and, and, and they're seen as leaders. But at the end of the day, those guys are making $30 million a year. Yeah. And 80% of the players on their team are making two. Yeah. No, you're right. You're right. And those guys have locked up deals and have played for a long time or in Russell Wilson's case has a guaranteed deal extended for a long time. And most of these other guys are year to year. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. It, uh, I, I think it will pass and I can't wait to see what's going to happen. Now you bring up players that have a big voice that make a lot of money that have played for a long time. Let's talk about your boy, Tommy, Tom Brady has a decision to make. Uh, the The league's new year begins on uh, March 18th. And the, the Patriots can sign him before then. I, do you, I'm guessing that you get the feeling that that's not going to happen, right? No, I think he's going to wait till the 18th. He, I, he likes... I think he, like, he has enjoyed the pageantry of of uh, having a, for the first time ever, power over Bill Belichick. Um, I do think there's always been a little bit of a power struggle there. Um, and, uh, and I you know, he's never been able to go through free agency before. Yeah. So he's actually going through the process. And I think at the end of the day, it's going to be good for the players and the players' union. Yeah. Yeah. Now, it, there's there was an article that ESPN put out that said that it was basically down to four teams. Which which Tom did not give four teams. No, he didn't Tom give four never teams. Talked to anybody. This is once again somebody guessing. Yeah. Somebody yeah, yeah, nobody has stuff out of their ass. Nobody has information no. on this. No, uh, this is complete speculation. Right. Now, if you look at teams he is uh he would assume to be interested in and what teams have already started, you know, with contingency plans and whatnot, like that, that aren't trying to go for Brady. Uh, the Raiders are looking at Marcus Mariota. The Bears are moving on. They're but looking at whatever. Everybody's looking at multiple options. And Agreed. if you're a league that is a billion dollar franchise and your only job is to put together a team, then you've got to have four or five different possibilities for the most important position on the field. Correct. Correct. So this is this is not this this is once again all just complete speculation. Uh, the teams that were listed by ESPN, the Pats, the Titans, the Chargers, and the Bucks. Uh, do you feel like anybody else should have been included on that list? This is just your opinion. No, but I also don't think that that the Chargers should be on the list at all. Literally, at no point in time do we have any evidence whatsoever that they are a possibility other than they have a lot of cap room and t- Tom's family at some point in time is going to move to LA. Yeah. I mean, he's got a, a charity that's based out of LA, but, um, but you know, with that cares? logic is just so dumb. You can't, you just, you just can't do that. At no point in time. Do I think he's going to trade Anthony Lynn for Bill Belichick or Bill Belichick for Anthony Lynn? Do I think he's going to trade the Kraft family for, the, the guys running, you know, one of the most bumbled franchises in all of sports and a, a very unlikable family. What um, what what is what are their names? Uh, uh, Spaziano? Spanos. Spanos. No, nope. Scott, you're, I think you were right more than I was right. Now you, I think you might be right. I think it's the Spanos. Uh, yeah, I can't talk. Good gracious, Spanos family. Um. Yeah, yeah it's been, no, sorry, I was right. They're not likable. Um, no. In L.A., I mean, you would have to you'd have to pay him an astronomical figure, um, just because of state income tax in the in the state of California. I mean, it, well, it, I mean, he lives in Connecticut right now, and he works in Massachusetts. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, he, he's already taxed high. I'm not worried about the taxes. I'm worried more about is he is he putting himself in a better football position, or is he just going? Do you think he's just going to Hollywood? Like that would that would have to be his only thing is is I'm just going to Hollywood. I mean, obviously we are we are just speculating here, but I you have that makes to no think, sense at all. Yeah, if you know anything about Tom Brady, you know that he is a, a hardcore competitor. 
and he wants to go somewhere that he can win. That's right. So, and we live in a global society. You yes. can get from Connecticut to L.A. pretty damn easy. Yeah. Especially if you're flying private, which he is. Or if, if your family, I mean, we can. That dude does not have a d- connection in Atlanta. I promise you that. No, that's that's true. I you guarantee. you Delta or Southwest. Like the, it's not happening. The Raiders are an option if you look at it just from that standpoint, if only because the family can go on a move out to L.A. and it's a 45-minute plane ride from L.A. Yeah. to Vegas. Like he could do that every day. That's what that's yeah. what uh, uh, Archie Manning did, every day. You know, like I flew from from New Orleans, and it was about an hour flight. But he flew there and he flew home, and and it happened every single day. So that's not out of the realm of possibilities. Um, I think if you're looking at at the favorites, like the absolute favorites, and the betting market shows this, it's between the Titans and the Patriots. Yeah, I think so too. So with with the Titans. You've got a guy that you're buddies with, and so long as you re-sign Derrick Henry, you've got a strong running game, and you got weapons. Um, you got a, a good defense. You know this is a, a Titans team that actually beat the Patriots. Um, I, you know, I just I can't, I don't see in my head. I cannot see. Tom Brady playing for anybody other than the Patriots. Yeah. I do think it would a, it would be a smart move. If he yeah. was going to leave, I think that the Titans would be a good spot. But I just can't see it. It might happen. Okay? I'm not saying I can't see it. I could see it. It might happen. But to, to play the speculation game the way ESPN and all these people have done is tells me, A, they're really bad at their job at creating content. Okay, there's enough <laughs> real news out there that you don't have to make something up and just play a hypothetical game. They have entire television shows dedicated to a hypothetical. Oh yeah, which is a terrible business model. Well, I mean, they've it's also got. Terrible. They, here's the thing, though, is people like to talk about what ifs all the time. They talk about they talk about Michael Jordan versus LeBron James. But that's ad nauseum. I almost it would give credence to that. Because at least you have two people that have given you the prime body of their work. You know? Like, we have all the variables that we need to gauge that. Because everything LeBron gets from this point forward is, while he's playing at an unbelievable level, it's on the downside of his career. So if we just take both of their primes, we've already seen that. So you can at least play that game. This is just, I'm. they're literally making shit up. Yeah. 100%. One hundred percent. The thing that I sent you the other day. So I was watching. Uh, who was it? Doug Gottlieb was hosting Colin Cowherd's show. Was it yesterday? I guess it was. It was on Monday. And his. Let me pull up the picture because the the setup that he had was just ridiculous. Like he he was breaking down what Tom Brady's decision, and like how it would affect the rest of the NFL, and. He had him go into the Chargers, which is not going to happen. It's right. just not. And, and then, then he had he the had Patriots the... getting Jameis Winston. <laughs> and I assure you that I have followed the works of Bill Belichick enough to know that they are not. Mitchell Trubisky will be the quarterback for the Patriots before Jameis Winston will. I, I agree. Like if, if there is one thing on this planet. Joe Burrow will be the quarterback of the Patriots before Jameis Winston yeah. will. If there's one thing that, that Belichick will not put up with, it is a quarterback giving the other team the football. And Jameis has not shown well, an ability to stop that. showing immaturity, no leadership whatsoever. He he wasn't a senior. He's he, he, he was never a captain of anything. Look at all the attributes that Bill looks at when he drafts players. Go look at the drafts. Look at the front. You and me talked about this the other night off camera, obviously, but um, we had read somewhere where somebody said, somebody wrote a report where could the heir apparent be the the quarterback of Oregon State for the Patriots, <laughs> and I don't know anything about this guy. I can't tell you that I've watched outside of last year, maybe two Oregon State games with you, one of them. Um, but I saw one second, I don't know what this kid looks like at all, but I said, I bet he's about 6'5". 
I bet he's about 220 pounds. I bet he's a great looking kid. I bet he's crazy smart. I bet he's at least a fifth year senior. And I bet he's been a captain every year he's been on the damn team and started. Yep. Jake, and he ended up being a six year senior. Yep. Jake and Luton. And all of those other things were absolutely true. You know why? Because Bill Belichick is predictable. Here's uh so here's a SaturdayBlitz.com article that says uh three reasons why Jake Luton will be a good NFL quarterback. Didn't even know the kid's name. Uh it says number three, ability to take care of the ball. Yep. Um Let's see. Even before he became the full-time starter in 2019, he did a good job keeping care of the ball. In 2017, he had 135 pass attempts with only four interceptions. In 2018, he had 224 pass attempts with four interceptions. Last year, he had 358 pass attempts with only three interceptions. So, yeah. I feel uh, like I know Tommy B. I feel like I know Bill B. I promise you. Tommy's not going to LA. He ain't going to the damn Chargers. All right. Agreed. He's not charged trading Bill Belichick for Anthony Lynn. Not happening. No, I agree. Robert Kraft for Dean Spanos. Not happening. And if he does leave, they are not the the New England Patriots quarterback. If Bill Belichick is still the head coach, will not be Jameis Winston. Uh so the next three or the next steps after this, let me go on and, and break those down real quick. They said, uh, number three, the Bucks acquire Matt Stafford, which I don't know how that fits into any of this. I uh, did. What does that have to do with the cost of tea in China? It, nothing. But I, how do we even know that that could happen? Because Stafford is still under contract. You know? The uh, Bucks could do that without Tom going anywhere. Because uh, Jameis is a free agent. And they could just be like, we don't want you. We're going to trade for this guy. Yeah. It said, uh, the Lions draft Tua. Uh, the Dolphins draft Justin Herbert. The Colts sign Phillip Rivers. The Titans re-sign Ryan Tannehill. The Panthers sign Teddy Bridgewater. And then the Bears acquire Cam Newton. Uh, all of this is going to happen because Tom chose to go to the Chargers. And but we've I, already But I'm determined. really glad that like 30 people at what some studio had worked for the day. I'm really glad <laughs> that's the content that they felt was important to put out. I'm annoyed <laughs> having the conversation that we're having right now because I want to wait until we actually have a decision, and then I'll give you a reaction. Yeah. But right now, I'm reacting to nothing. Yeah. I'm reacting to things that might happen. And and we have no idea because Tom doesn't let that stuff leak. No. Let's. Hey, speaking of leak, uh, so the conversation between Belichick and Brady, do you think that people were just making stuff up, or or did Brady like come out and tell somebody that his conversation with Belichick did not go well? I'm 100% certain that people made that up. That's uh, It might not have gone well, but they could have taken body language. They could have taken however they thought they saw him after the meeting or appointment. But one thing that does not happen, Tom, in all his years of being there, and Bill, of all his years of, of being alive, they don't talk. Well, they don't on, talk to the media at all. On top they of that... They shit and they keep him in the dark. On top of that... Um, I'm like I thought this was a phone call. Like I I don't think it was an actual in person meeting. I think it was a phone call. Then unless you got a wiretap of it, then no. I'm telling you, these two people didn't talk to the media. Doesn't mean their perceptions are wrong, but I'm telling you, they didn't talk. Yeah. Nobody called a media guy and leaked anything. Yeah, I I just I don't I don't see that. I don't, I'm with you. I'm with you. Like it, it would be wiretapping the phones. I, that would not surprise me if somebody's got a wiretap on a phone in Gillette. Like, that just wouldn't shock me at all. Uh, you might be right. <laughs> I would bet I would bet. Right. crazy, dirty, you know, journalists probably have wiretaps on all 32 professional teams. Yeah. Yeah, you're probably wouldn't right. Wouldn't shock me one bit. Um, let's move off of that. Let's, uh, let, well, we've been on for about 40 minutes now. Let's, uh, let's close out with this. Uh, eh, you know, this might be a short one. I might be able to toss in a couple of college football Q&As. Um, Tua Tagovailoa was cleared by doctors for football activities. One, was that shocking to you? Like, it was just November that, that he dislocated his hip and, like, he couldn't even walk. Um, Nothing surprises me about medical advancements today. I, I mean, you're probably right about that. In, tw tw God, I don't know. I was 16 years old. I'm 37 now. Subtract the math. I don't know. I don't know what year that was. I tore every ligament in my leg out. Had massive surgery, and my 
my leg was scarred up, cut up, chopped up to pieces. The next year, one of my best friends had almost the same thing happen. Didn't blow out all of them, but blew out a lot and had three pinholes in his knee. I was on crutches for nine months. He was on crutches for two weeks. Yeah. In one year, medical advancement changed that much. So, no, that doesn't surprise me at all because I, it's something I don't know anything about. But I know this. Doctors today are really, really good. Yeah. They're just they're really good. Uh, the advancements are are beyond ridiculous. So it's why the coronavirus doesn't scare me. At some point in time, I just trust that people smarter than me are going to figure this thing out. Yeah, they'll figure it out, and then they will have cures for it, and they will it will be widely available. So, but until then, you know, we'll figure it out. Life will go on. Uh, so the other part of this, with Tua being cleared, he is going to throw at Alabama's pro day on April 9th. Um, I I can't see him getting past number five with the Dolphins. Um, but I, I no, think, and I could see somebody moving up for him. That's what I was going to say. I could I could see this like changing the way that everybody has viewed the mock drafts for. I mean, months and months and months at this point. It, since he got injured, I could see him going top three easily. Yeah, uh, I don't I could know that see he would him going too. Yeah, yeah. I, either either the Redskins could just flat out take him. Uh, I think Ron Rivera wants him. Well, that's okay. So let's let's discuss that. Uh, I, mean, I think Ron Rivera wants him. This this has happened multiple times. Do you think that it is a smart decision if you don't feel like? you have the right guy. Like, if he's watched enough tape of Dwayne Haskins you're, and he you're knows... You're asking the wrong person this. Are you sure? Yeah. It, give, give me give me your thought. Yeah, as soon as you know you have a losing hand, you shoot that guy in the head. <laughs> I didn't expect it to be quite quite no, so not, uh, listen, aggressive. Man, this is business. <laughs> I, 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 I'm going to tell you this. Dwayne Haskins was a hire from the owner. He wanted a local D.C. kid, okay, who Dwayne Haskins was. That's what he wanted. Jay Gruden had lost his ability to make any decisions because they knew if Jay Gruden doesn't win with my kid, he is being fired. And I think Ron Rivera came in, and Ron Rivera said, if you want me to be your head coach, you will take Mr. Paul Allen, and you will push him out that window. That guy's been your best friend for 30 years, and you will take him out back, and you'll shoot him in the head. And, and you'll let me make the decision. And Dan Snyder walked him out and said goodbye to a 30-year friendship. Yeah, it's obvious. I, I think it's pretty obvious that Snyder I, I, and, wants and to. And Ron Rivera has made it clear he does not believe in Dan Haskins, Dwayne Haskins. I just think I think they're going to be make a move. They're going to be a player. They're going to be a player. Now, are they a player for like a veteran quarterback, or are they a player for? Hey, we're we're kind of in a rebuilding mode anyway. Let's go ahead and take Tua and then see where it goes from there. Do they still have the, Case Keenum? Like, no, that I don't know the answer to. Do, that do I don't they? Know the answer to. Do they have? They've got Case Keenum for another year, don't they? No, uh, maybe. I think. They, I mean, they just signed Probably him last year. No way they signed him for one year, right? That's well, um, no, they traded for Case Keenum. Case Keenum was under right. contract was, for the for the Broncos. For the Broncos, uh, contract details. Let's see. To look that up. He is Sorry. a 2020 unrestricted free agent. So yeah, they've got him for this year, but they won't have him for next. Let's see. No, uh, no, he's like 2020, as in he's an unrestricted free agent. Oh, he's right restricted now. now. Then no, then yeah, then the, I was about to say that I don't know. So who who else do they even have? Oh, that's right, because Case Keenum is like the number one guy. A lot of people think the Browns should go after for a veteran backup. Um, so I knew that. I should have known that. What about Colt McCoy? What is I okay. bet Colts locked up still. You're you're probably right. Uh let's see. He uh nope. Uh he agreed to a one year contract back in twenty eighteen. Da, 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 da. Yeah, but he's not going anywhere. There's not a there's not a, another team in all thirty one franchises that'll take Colt McCoy. Colt McCoy is an unrestricted free agent right now. They have no quarterbacks on their roster. Well, they've got Dwayne Haskins. I mean, yeah, they got Haskins. So, yeah. I would bet a lot of teams only have one quarterback on their roster right now. Yeah, you're probably right. I mean, the Patriots only have one quarterback on the roster, and it's Jerry Stidham. So, yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, it's not that this is no big deal. It's free agent in this draft time. Then you'll figure this thing out. I, I just don't think Ron sold on him, which he shouldn't be. I'm not sold on him. I don't think he's any good. No, I, I think he was a bad hire. Good. When the owners step in and make hires that the owners want to make, they tend to be bad. They tend to all be wrong. So, yeah. Yeah, you're right. These guys are billionaires and they're really good at something. They're just not good at this. Most of them, no. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. And uh, it hurts them so bad that this is the one thing they're not good at. Nah, you're you're right. They they don't know football. Period. No, I so I it wouldn't surprise me if they take him. And now the the downside is 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 young is a DC guy, and he played with Haskins. And do you pair two DC guys up? And that's what the owner's going to want to do. Yeah, yeah. I think that would be a mistake, and I would take the quarterback move or I sell the pick. Because you could get, there's a chance where a team's gonna go out there and give you a king's ransom for Tua. Yeah, I think uh, I think you're right about that. I think you are right about that. Uh, the Raiders still have two first round picks in this draft. That's true. The Dolphins have multiple first round picks in this draft. I mean, you could fix this team this year with this draft if you really like it. I think you have got a very valid point. You so the I mean, Ra- you could get you could get a king's ransom for for a quarterback for that two spot. I think I talked on the daily show would do if it was my pick and I get to play GM, which I really like doing on this show. um, (laughs) I'd sell the pick. I'd sell the hell out of it. You you were probably first. I won't, I won't, I won't two first in this year's draft from one of those teams. And I won't next year's first. Uh, That would get you back almost what they gave up for Robert Griffin. Yeah. So kind of, kind of write the ship. I think you would get more back for Robert because I don't know that the Rams drafted very well in that draft. Well, no, no, no. I'm just talking about it, picks themselves. Yeah, the like, number not, of picks, yes. But yeah, if you look back on player for player, I think the potential is better than what the Rams, what I know they got. Because I don't think Jeff Fisher was very good at drafting at that point in time in his life. No, you you are certainly right about that. <laughs> you are you are definitely right about that. Uh, let's uh, let's close out. I've got one college football question I'll ask you. Okay. Um, and these like these are questions that can be asked basically at any point. Uh, and we're going to do a lot of some. We'll do a few shows where we're just going through some of these questions because I've got like right now I've got forty four. I'm going to have even more than that. Oh, um, but let's uh, let's close out with this one. Um, let's see. Did I, ah, here we go. So Willie Fritz did not get a P five head coaching job this year. Uh, he is still the head coach at Tulane. Um, is ageism a thing in college football coaching searches? Like, are the days of a coach staying at a school for 20-plus years pretty much over uh, unless you are already old when you get the job or when you get really good? Well, those are, those are completely different questions. All right. Is Let's, ageism a thing? Yes. Is staying at a job for 20 years a thing in the past? I don't think so. Who would you say would stay at a school. Like an old guy is not going to stay there for 20 years because he's already old and 20 years will be dead. Agreed. Agreed. Um, well, but I think the idea is if a guy has, because obviously like Kirk Ferentz already been at Iowa for 20 plus years. Uh, Gary Patterson. Yeah, Kirk Ferentz is like, what, 68, 65? Yeah, he's late 60s. So in 20 years, he'll be 85. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm yeah, talking be, about like, dead. I'm talking about guys that get hired into new places, you know, at Whoever it is in the last okay. in the last like if somebody seven who's forty years. years old takes the Iowa job, will they keep it for twenty years? Yeah, probably. I, th- I guess it depends on the job, right? Well, that's but that's always the case. Like Iowa, the next coach at Alabama, I will bet my life won't be there for twenty years. I, I bet they probably won't be there as long as Saban was. I bet they won't be there for five. because so, but I, I just I just think there are different schools that are gonna if you go to Ole Miss. And you're if Lane Kiffin says, "Look, man, I tried it everywhere else, and nobody else would have me, and nobody gave me the, and now I'm on my fourth chance, and right now I'm not going to mess this up, and he doesn't get in trouble in the NCAA, and he wins six to eight games a year and beats Mississippi State, you know, and then pulls off an upset here, seventy percent of the time beats one team a year that he's not supposed to be, he'll be there for the rest of his life." Yeah, you might be right about that. He'll be that. there as long as he wants to be there. They'll never run him out. There'll yeah. never be a year where the one time he goes five and, and seven and loses the state 
and they'll be like, well, it's time just to run its course. I don't think that's going to happen. I, the one I would have bet my life on for somebody that would have been somewhere for 20 years was uh, Peterson, Chris Peterson at Washington. That's surpri- that is the most surprising thing in the world. I can't explain that. You're right. Well, You're and that's, right. that's if, if I would have actually looked at the list, that's the one where I'd say that guy's going nowhere. The, that guy would be there until he's ready to retire, whenever yeah, that is. The the amount of money that these coaches are making now and the pressures of the job in, in D one college football, uh, I think it may make it where you're not going to see twenty year guys, no matter what. Because I think once you've been at a school, like once you've been coaching for 10 years or however long it is. If they retire, it's one thing. A lot of them may just get tired of it. So, I mean, they could leave and then come back. Because they made so much more money than coaches in the past made. Yeah. Which is why they stayed for 20 years. Yeah. No, you're you're right on that, but. Well, and then back in the the day, day, you could stay. I could see Pat Fitzgerald staying forever. As long as he wants. As long yeah. as he wants at Northwestern. And that's a job where, like, the, the pressure of that job isn't that big a deal. Like, no, it, it's non-existent. He, he literally goes to his press conferences and tells his fans, his students, his media, because they're not getting covered by ESPN and, and, and Sports Illustrated and Yahoo. They're not going to, to Northwestern's press conferences. These are his own local media guys. And he's telling them, pound sand, I don't have to tell you anything. Yeah. And they all just take it. They just take it because he's one of them. He's a Northwestern kid, and he's from here, and we're just going to let him do whatever he wants because he's good enough. Yeah, he's he's got good seasons here and there. He makes it to bowl games regularly. Um, But do I think ageism is a thing? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think think Bill Clark doesn't have a job right now because of his age. 100% 100% nobody will convince How me crazy is that? I mean, he's he's still in his 50s, you know? Yeah, but he doesn't look like he's in his 50s. The difference between him and Pete Carroll. Yeah, that's true. I think Pete Carroll, people give Pete Carroll a chance at 70 years old before they give Bill Clark a chance at 50 because he doesn't look like he can handle it. Yeah, now you're right about that. We do so much of the cut of that guy's jib. How does his chin look? How does this person look? Not what's real, not any substance is does this guy look like a pile of shit that I think he's a pile of shit? Hey, you know who who doesn't fit that narrative? Mike Leach. <laughs> well, <laughs> but, but even I, still, he didn't get other opportunities. No, but say, look at the oppor- the best job he's ever gotten, he just got. Yeah. He's had two shithole jobs before this. And and you could reasonably say, and now this is no offense to Mississippi State, but in the state of the SEC... Uh, well, yeah, it's one of the lower one tier of the lower jobs. Tier jobs. The yeah, yeah. I mean, that's not a knock. It's just what it is. You you can tell the tier of the job by the athletic budget. I mean, that's just the truth. If you think that's a shot at Mississippi State, listen, Ole Miss spent eighty million dollars on football last year, and y'all spent thirty five. Yeah. Okay. At some point in time, we have to use some metrics, and it's not wins and losses all the time because those change from year to year. Oh yeah. If you're spending half of what your biggest in state rival is spending. And they've got the same amount of money coming into their school as you do yours. It just tells you the tier of the program. That's that's not a yeah. knock on you. Hey, listen, if you can have a better program than them and spend half the money, that's awesome. I think that's great because I like fiscal responsibility. Oh yeah, the return on investment is is fantastic. unbelievable. So and you also have my favorite coach in the world. <laughs> so that's bonus, bonus. It, it no it, in the world like more so than O right now. Well, anybody outside of O, how's that? Five years ago, if O wasn't at LSU, the answer to that is yes. So I have to, I have to be honest about the question. I think what I think O we did can... last year for me? No, no, it, it launched him over less, and I didn't think anybody on earth would ever take that mantle. Really, this was my coach. He was my coach for the most meaningful years of my life, being developed and growing as a man. I didn't think I would ever love anybody the way I love less, and that's just not true. Yeah, there you go. Listen, okay. that is that is a that is a something the current Mrs. Giannini needs to hear. <laughs> We're all replaceable. You I got might that think right. I can never find anybody else like you. But I might. But you might. You might. I, might. That's, I, I would have just gone on and talked up Les Miles as he will always be up there. He's already moved into like the Hall of Fame status. Well, he is. He is. He's done. Everything he does now, I just want it to be entertaining. Yeah. 
Now, you're oh, right if he could have beat, oh my God, if he had beat Texas this year, I don't know if I'd have been able to mentally handle that. <laughs> Just this close. I would have loved it. It's close to beating Texas. That That's was, all uh, I wanted in my life. That happened while we were in uh, in Chicago, didn't it? Uh, I think so. Yeah, I think that's I think that's when it was going down. Oh, so, so talk about fantastic! All right, that's gonna wrap it up for tonight's show. This was a uh, this was a lot of fun. I like these longer form ones where we can just yeah. sit and talk for next an hour. Time, next time you can come sit by me. Yeah, uh, I think that'll be Thursday. At least I hope. Okay, that's, yeah, that's you our plan. Come try try to come over Thursday. All right. Yeah, uh, ran into ran into some uh, marriage obligations <laughs> this evening, <laughs> so. Uh, but yeah, we will be doing this again uh, multiple times a week, and like I said, I've got plenty of questions that we can uh, that we can go over, and we're gonna have fun. I do with think this. somebody needs to hire Willie Fritz, though. Oh, one hundred percent. Can I go on record as that? Oh, I don't yeah. know how old the man is, but he's, he's still mid-60s. got several years left. Let's get the man a job. He's mid sixties, so like no it. offense to the good people at Tulane, and they like their program. They don't want me to see. This is the hard part: is schools that we like. You don't want to take their coach take away. Their, I'm trying to take their coach away, but. Come on, man! I want the, I want to see the guy get paid. Well, I, think I want that, to see him play with the big boys. Tulane is a a better ground to help develop coaches, as opposed to keep a yeah. guy that's you know. I know we're trying to get out of here. I'm I'm on a Willie Willie Fritz thing now. Go ahead. This is a guy I like, and this is school I like a lot. Okay, so be careful with how I do this. But if Coach Boom don't work out in South Carolina after this year, is that somewhere you think Willie could succeed? Yeah. A hundred percent. I'm going to tell you that would that would warm my heart. Yeah, I think I think he could really succeed there because he he is a a X's and O's like developmental guy. I like want to see just, him. He, he teaches I fundamentals. See Kirby Smart have to have to coach against him. Kirby will have always better talent than him. I want to see him have to coach against him. Yeah, I want to see Dan, who I, I I like to make fun of Dan, but I respect Dan as a great head coach. For those that don't know, Dan. he's talking Dan Mullen. <laughs> I want to see Dan go head to head with Willie. I want to see Willie match wits with some of these guys because I think he's up there with them. Oh yeah, I mean he, he, he gets just, to play Jimbo just Fisher every been year. Been in a small school. Yeah. Uh, by the way, I don't know if you're watching. We're we're recording in the middle of the uh, the no, WCC. No, I'm not conference. watching anything. What's uh, happening in Gonzaga? Gonzaga is up 82 to 58 right now. Ooh, that got ugly. Yeah, it was a one point game at the half, and there's I know, a, there's that's two. When we started. It's only two and a half minutes left, but. Come uh, on, St. Mary's. All of his two and a half minutes is over. Yeah, I mean, this is done. This is this is way done. Damn. So, it's a uh, winning We missed bet. a good game. I yeah. got to see a good part. I got oh, to yeah. see a close part. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, Gonzaga, like, look, Gonzaga beat them by 30 at their place earlier this year. They beat them by 10 last week. That's um, why you play the game. That's why you play the tournament games, though, man. Don't oh, yeah. Happen? I mean, you never know. You never know. What happened last week is irrelevant. Now, you're, you're 100% right about that. Hundred percent right about that. And I like St. Mary's. I don't really like Gonzaga ever. Really? But we, you know, we're gonna talk about this leading up to the NCAA tournament. We'll we'll discuss that maybe on Thursday night because now I play anybody this year. Thankfully, St. Mary's is really good. Yeah, but year in and year out, they go into the tournament with one loss, maybe if that. But they didn't play a single ranked team the entire year, and they get in the first time they play a good team, they get your ass whipped. Yeah, you might be right. They're not battle tested. They're Alabama. Oh my God! Beat, beat up on a bunch of high school teams. The LSU comes in and puts their ass whooping on you. <laughs> then you go to Auburn, get that ass whooped again. Uh, we are getting out of here. I play good teams. Tunica, Mississippi, is the South's premier sports gambling destination. They got six wonderful sports books. We can vouch for all of them. They got great shows coming through town. They got great steakhouses. Go check it out. TunicaTravel.com is the website. We will be down there Thursday, March nineteenth, and Friday, March twentieth. We'll be at Sam's Town Casino. Go to samstowntunica.com, get your rooms, come hang out with us. We are going to have an absolute friggin' blast watching the NCAA tournament. We got four live broadcasts, 9.30 a.m. both days, 4 p.m. Central both days. It's going to be a good time. Watch the NCAA tournament with us. Uh, Check out CapWise, capwise capwise.com, their 2020 March Madness betting guide. It is fantastic. Use the promo code WCE, and you will get $5 off of that. It will be delivered to you. The Monday after the brackets come out, they are already working on all the data on all of these teams. Go check it out, capwise.com. Uh, so, yeah, Samstown in Tunica, Mississippi, March 19th, March 20th. Come hang out with us. Uh, it's going to be a good time. So, winningcureseverything.com is the website. Make sure that you hit the subscribe button. Leave us a nice comment. Chris, anything else you can think of that we need to hit tonight? That's it. 
That's wonderful. I can't wait to see you in person here in a couple of days, buddy. Uh, we will see all of you again later on this week. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show.